I've said it once and I'll say it again. The upcoming TV lineup might be stronger than the upcoming movie lineup. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I am doing a tier list ranking of upcoming TV shows based on my excitement. Now the shows that are on this list are either shows that have a new season coming out soon, in some cases a final season, or entirely new series. And all these shows are speculated to come out in 2024 or 2025. And I'm obviously not talking about all the TV shows coming out like network shows or every straight to streaming show because that would be insane. These are some of the biggest shows or most popular coming out very soon. Before I get into this though, be sure to that like button and comment down below your most anticipated TV show for the foreseeable future. Subscribe to that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. It mean a lot. And if you want to watch movies and TV shows that I talk about on this list with me, you can actually do so on my Patreon. I drop commentary tracks over there for movies and TV shows. My commentary tracks for every episode of Stranger Things are out. I recently watched National Treasure and I have tons of content lined up for my Patreon. So for $5 a month, you guys can join that. And the next 30 people who do so will actually be entered into a giveaway to win a Funko Pop, a 4K Steelbook, a movie poster, and more. So consider joining the Filmstock Patreon community today for $5. Your support goes a very long way in helping support me directly in my content creation journey. Without further ado, let's rank these shows. All right, so the tiers I have are Need It Now, I'm Excited, I'm Curious, eh, and I don't care. And again, I have probably 20 plus shows on here that are coming out in 2024, 2025, and they're ones that are worth talking about right now. With TV shows, there are so many shows out there that get announced three months in advance that like we kind of know about, and then they're like, oh, this show's coming out in three months or in two weeks, and they're hard to speculate in advance for, unlike movies. Kickstarting this list is The Acolyte. This is the upcoming Star Wars series set prior to The Phantom Menace. It comes out in June. The trailer was fine, and I know there's a lot of negativity surrounding this project online, but setting all that aside, I am curious, I'm putting it there right now, it is a Star Wars series. We've never seen a canon live action series take place before The Phantom Menace, so it's an unexplored time period in my mind, and I think they could do a lot of really neat things with this project. It is Star Wars on Disney+. Plus. They've missed a lot recently, and Disney Plus shows in general are very hit or miss, sadly. So that's why I'm curious, more so cautiously optimistic than anything. But it is focusing on these earlier days of the Jedi and the exploration of the Sith. So I will be sat. I'm curious, but I can't say I'm excited outright. Moving on, though, we've got Wednesday Season 2, which I believe is supposed to come out late this year, but likely early next year, maybe even in the fall of 2025. I would say I am curious about this. I would put it at the top of curious. I enjoyed season one of Wednesday. I thought the ending was all right. I, I enjoyed the sort of mystery dynamic of the show leading up to the finale. And then when the reveal happened, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I enjoyed the ride more than the destination, if that makes sense. But I hear season two from Jenna Ortega and others have said, they want to go more horror focused and cut down on the romance, so that intrigues me. If they're going more full-fledged horror for season two, I'd say I'm really curious. But the reason I have it here and not outright excited is because, again, is a season two gonna work or not? I can't say confidently that it will, but I would like to believe if they, you know, delve into the horror more, it could work and be just as good as the first season, maybe even better. Hopefully they're vastly different tonally, but we'll see. Moving on, we've got The Last of Us Season 2. I'm outright excited for this bad boy. Um, now, it is adapting the second game, which is highly controversial. I will not be saying what happens in that game if you guys don't know, if you want to avoid spoilers. But you're probably going to get spoiled anyway if you don't play the game before. Someone's going to say something about it, so you've been warned. But when it comes to The Last of Us Season 2... I'm curious to see how they split up the game. Are they going to add depth to certain characters, specifically the character of Abby from the game? Are they gonna perhaps switch around the order of events from the game in season two? I have a lot of questions, so I'm very interested to see how they adapt it. We know in season one of The Last of Us, they made some pretty big changes and even gave whole side story episodes to characters who had smaller roles in the first game, but they made them more prominent in the first season. So I'm wondering if The Last of Us season two will do that or not. Regardless, I'm excited. Season one ruled. I'm due to rewatch that one soon. And The Last of Us season two should be high, high quality television. I cannot wait. Moving on, we've got Squid Game season two. I would say, eh, I'm actually going to put it in the eh tier because I am very against the idea of continuing this show. It worked well as a miniseries, and then at the very end, they left it open for a sequel. Obviously, it was a huge success for Netflix. The numbers don't lie. They're going to make more of this because it is such a profitable IP for them. And again, money's the name of the game for all these companies. These are businesses at the end of the day. 
but is there a story to tell in Squid Game Season 2 that still feels original and fresh? I worry this season will be a little more gimmicky and just trying to recapture the lightning in a bottle that was season one. You can't predict what's going to be a success like that or not. I mean, season one was a global phenomenon. Can season two find that? Ugh. I hope I'm proven wrong, but Squid Game season two just seems more gimmicky than anything to me. They already had the whole reality show. I feel like the Squid Game buzz has really died down. And I don't know anyone who still talks about it, but that's just me. I know it's a global phenomenon. I would say, eh, I'm still going to tune in, but I don't really have a good feeling about this. Moving on, we've got Invincible Season 3, which I put on here just to say I still haven't watched Invincible Season 2. I watched Season 1, and I enjoyed it when I first watched it, but for whatever reason, I never had the desire to go back and rewatch it leading up to Season 2, and I was like, oh, I'll wait for the second part of season two to come out. That has come and gone, and I still have not watched Invincible. So maybe it's just some internal feeling I'm gonna have to work through to actually sit down and watch season two. But for that reason, I just am saying, eh, for Invincible season three. Um, I'd say I'm probably more excited for that than Squid Game season two, but for whatever reason, I gotta like look in the mirror and say, do I wanna watch Invincible anymore? Like, do I need to just revisit the first episode and the ending can kind of re-spark my interest in it? We'll see, but honestly, Invincible Season 2, I've heard mixed things on from people who love Season 1. They've told me, yeah, Season 2 was a big step down, so I'm kind of hesitant to go watch it. Moving on, we've got Agatha, which has had like 30 different names. Three, of course, but that's still a lot for a show to change that much in such a little period of time. When it comes to Agatha, I would say I'm curious more than anything. I would probably go at the back of Curious, just because... It's like a WandaVision spin-off focusing on Agatha Harkness. It was called Coven of Chaos, Darkhold Diaries. There was another name that's escaping me right now. This has been through, I think House of Harkness was the other one? Yeah. I mean, this has been through what seems like production hell. There's like a group of MC Disney Plus shows that have been speculated to come out for years now, and we've just got no news, Agatha being one of them. I'm curious because I've heard so many different concepts for this show. Is it going to be almost like an anthology thing where it's like a standalone episode with Agatha in a different time period? or is it going to connect to the greater big picture MCU? Who's to say, but I'm curious regardless to see what they do with that character. Moving on, we've got Outer Banks Season 4, p for l baby. I'm going excited with this one. Um, I love the vibes of Outer Banks. I would, I've said this before and I'll say it forever. I would watch Outer Banks to the end of time. If they made 70 seasons, I'd be sad for every single one of them. I love the teen drama. It gets more and more ridiculous and cheesy every season, but it knows what it is. And I'm ready for some more treasure hunting. In season four, we're going after Blackbeard's ship. Let's do it, baby. Moving on, we've got Daredevil Born Again, which thankfully had a creative overhaul. So now they've got, you know, Karen and Foggy back. It seems like they're going to the Netflix vibes, the TVMA rating, hopefully. And we've even seen John Bernthal return as the Punisher. So I assume this will be R-rated television like the Netflix series. Bring it on. I am going to say I am excited for this, but the only reason it's not in need it now is because it is Marvel Studios on Disney+. Plus. I loved Loki and they've had some winners for me over there, but I still have to wait and see if they actually commit to going back to the roots of this Netflix show. It seems like all the pieces are lined up for it to work, but can it? We'll have to see. I am excited though, I'm gonna put it probably in the middle. Uh, actually, you know what? I'd put it at the top of I'm excited because I really genuinely am. I saw, I mean, a few weeks back we got that picture of John Bernthal as Punisher on set with Charlie Cox and Matt Murdock, and I was like, hell yeah, bring it on. So I'm excited, but I am ever so slightly a little scared because it is straight to Disney Plus, and we know what they've done to shows in the past. Even something like The Mandalorian fell off hard. <sighs> anyway, next we've got Cobra Kai Season 6. Cobra Kai never dies, baby. This is one that I need right now. I'm putting it up there. It is the final season of this Netflix show. Based on everything we've heard from the creators and even cast and interviews, it's the biggest season by far. It is the best season, some are saying, and I firmly believe it will stick the landing. I am one of the Cobra Kai fans who's thought almost every season's pretty much gotten better. Season five is actually my favorite season of the bunch. It continues to get bigger in scale and cheesier and more epic but it never loses focus of what made it work in the first place, which is the characters. It still balances paying homage to the classic characters from the films while also having this new generation of characters. And we're seeing payoff with these characters, like someone like Miguel and Robbie, we've really seen have this full growth over four seasons where they're like brothers now. And there was a point in time where they wanted to kill each other. So I really do think we're starting to see the payoff for all these character arcs. It's epic, it's cheesy, but it knows that, and it's always had the same tone consistently, in my opinion. It was more small-scale, sure, in seasons one and two, but by the time we get to season five, I think it's earned 
that epic scale, while still, of course, having the smaller character moments. I need this now, I cannot wait, and I believe it's supposed to come out in 2024, but I'll believe that when I see it. Hopefully we get like a teaser trailer over the summer, I cannot wait. And you know for a fact, for those who've watched, I will be continuing my reaction series to Cobra Kai when the time comes. So if you haven't seen that reaction series, I'll link it up above. Had a lot of fun watching that show back in what, August of 2022? Where'd all the time go? Anyway, next we've got Bridgerton season three, which is actually being split into two parts. One comes out in May, one comes out in June. I watched Bridgerton for the first time with my lady friend in the summer last year. She got surgery, and so I watch a Bridgerton with her. It's one of her favorite comfort shows. I would say you might be shocked by this, but I'm actually pretty excited. I would put it at the back of I'm excited um, because it is focusing on Colin and Penelope this season and their romance. They've never been some of my favorite characters. I am more so intrigued by Eloise and Benedict getting their respective seasons, hopefully for seasons four and season five, but I'll still check it out. You've got Anthony and Kate in there. I'm excited to see the continuation of their relationship. Benedict will still have a subplot that hopefully sets up his main arc in season four, because I do believe he will be the next Bridgerton to get his own dedicated season. But yeah, I'm excited enough. I'll watch this with my girlfriend. We'll have fun with it. And she's passionate about Bridgerton and loves it. That kind of rubs off on me a little bit. So I'm excited for that. Next, we've got Andor season two. This is going in I Need It Now. I'm putting it right back here. Andor was pitched as a two season show. The first season blew my socks off. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. And it contains some of my favorite episodes of Star Wars media, period. So the fact that we're getting this second season, I cannot wait. It's gonna bridge the gap leading up to Rogue One. And I'm hoping that it still follows the like two to three episode story arcs that we got in season one, where every, you know, two or three episodes, Cassian would go on this new adventure or be caught up in a new set of circumstances and or some of the best Star Wars content we've gotten in years. I cannot wait for season two. I need it now. Next, we have Welcome to Dairy, which is the It series that's coming to Max, formerly HBO Max. I've seen It chapter one and two, and the second film was a big letdown for me, so I haven't revisited him since 2019, but I'm still... You know, I guess I'm curious about this, genuinely. I would probably put it at the back of I'm Curious just because I don't know much at all. But I do think there's a lot of potential with an It prequel, which I believe is what they're pitching it as like years before the It films. I think Bill Skarsgård might be in this as Pennywise. I don't know that for sure, but I would assume they would have him show up. Uh, I don't know. I'm curious, but... I'm actually gonna move this down to the top of it just because I'm so in the dark on it. And eh, will it work? I'm, I'm actually talking it out right now when I'm getting more and more skeptical. Moving on though, we've got Stranger Things season five. You guys already knew before you clicked on the video, this is the top of Need It Now. What I'm about to say, I mean from the bottom of my heart and I'm not just saying this. Stranger Things season five is my most anticipated piece of media ever. Over Avengers Endgame, over Avengers Infinity War, over The Force Awakens, over No Way Home, over any of it. I've never wanted to watch something more in my entire life. It's one of the first things I think of when I wake up in the morning. When I go to sleep at night, I'm thinking about what could happen in the show all day. There's multiple times a day where I'm thinking about scenarios or theorizing for season five. It has consumed my mind. I cannot wait to see how they end my favorite show of all time. I firmly believe the Duffer Brothers will stick the landing. I bet a lot of you guys watching this will too. It's their baby. This is not a Game of Thrones scenario where the creator's like, hell no, we want to leave this. Let's end this HBO. I want to go do Star Wars. It's their baby. It's their original idea. They've been there since the beginning. They want to make sure they stick the landing and deliver on one of the great finales of our time. I think they're going to do that with season five. I cannot wait. I legitimately fantasize about the day I can watch this. And I think about it every single day, multiple times a day. Need it now. Heading back over to Disney Plus, we've got Skeleton Crew. This is the upcoming show with Jude Law. There was a point in time where I could say I'm curious about this. I'm going at the top of eh anymore because it is Star Wars Disney Plus and you would think we would have gotten a trailer for this. This is a show that I think has been filmed for a while now. In fact, a lot of Disney Plus series I know for a fact filmed in like 2021, 2022. And have they just been sitting on the shelf? What's going on? Like, I don't understand. I know they've cut back on output ever since they had a, you know, recent shift with CEOs, but still, what is going on with Skeleton Crew? Are they just going to scrap some of these things entirely? I don't know. I'd say, eh, just because I, like, don't know if this is actually ever going to see the light of day anymore. Next, we have Peacemaker Season 2, which I am curious for. I'm putting it at the top of I'm Curious. If this were a situation where, you know, the DCEU was still around and we knew for a fact this was going to be a direct sequel to Peacemaker Season 1, I'd be like, hell yeah, I'm excited for that. But because we have the new shift in DC and we're going to James Gunn's vision, the DCU, it's hard for me to get a read on this. How are they going to make this work within the world of DC? 
without confusing fans, because I heard James Gunn say it's a part of the DCU. Well, the first season's a part of the DCEU, technically, so how's that gonna work? I don't understand if there's gonna be some sort of shift in the universe that, you know, explains it in MCU terms, almost like some sort of blip type of event, or a Doctor Strange spell that wipes a bunch of memory of someone's existence. Like, how are they gonna make this work? I don't know. Are they just gonna have Peacemaker do his thing, but he's in a different universe? Confuses the hell out of me, to be honest. That's why I'm curious more than anything, because I really am excited to see John Cena back and I thought season one was great, but how's it gonna work within the universe? I don't know. Next we have House of the Dragon season two. I'm pumped for this. I'm going at the top of I'm excited because you know what? We know it's gonna deliver. House of the Dragon season one kicked ass. Season two looks like it's gonna be even bigger and better. And there's a lot of tension right now. At the end of season one, if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it, something crazy happens. There's a big death and man oh man, are the repercussions of that gonna be explored in this second season. I think we're slowly building to an all-out war in this show. It's got the early Game of Thrones feel. It takes me back to when I first watched Game of Thrones and ate it up. There's political dialogue and tension out the wazoo. I cannot wait for this epic season of television. I'm very, very excited for it. It's not a need it now because I can wait. I'm okay waiting till June. I really am excited to have this every Sunday night though. Next we have The Boys Season 4, which I'm putting right up there alongside House of the Dragon. Both of these shows come out in June. June's gonna be stacked, because I'm talking about another show coming out in a minute that's also dropping in June that I am so excited for. But The Boys Season 4, I mean, we know what we're getting at this point, and I don't mean that in a bad way. We know we're gonna get very high quality television. Where we left off in Season 3, lots of tension. Homelander starting to develop a cult following in the world. This show just continues to have a more and more relevant social commentary about today's society, and it impresses me some of the jokes they're able to pull off with this. It's dark comedy done right. I'm really intrigued to see the direction they're headed, but most importantly, will Homelander make it out of the season alive or not? I've always said I don't think there's a The Boys show without Homelander, and I think the creators said their vision is maybe five seasons, so that's why I'm a little reserved about putting this and need it now, because we know there's probably gonna be a season five. There's gonna be another season of Gen V, I believe. Are they ever gonna take down Homelander? Are we just gonna have a repeat plot in the season where the boys fall just short of taking down Homelander yet again? I don't know. This show risks getting a little too repetitive for me. I'm still very excited for it though. Next, we have The Penguin. Honestly, I'm excited for this, guys. We're getting a lot of quality TV, it looks like, this year. I'm gonna put it like right here, probably. Uh, near the back of I'm Excited, but I mean, the trailer had like mobster movie vibes. We're seeing that seedy underbelly of Gotham City and Colin Farrell's unrecognizable yet again. He was a standout in the Batman film. We get more of him in Matt Reeves' The Batman World. Sign me up. I'm already sold. I will be sat for that show. Next, we have The Bear Season 3. This is going and need it now. I'm actually going to put it like right here. Uh, dang near, like, like right there. I'll go third because at the end of season two, that was a cliffhanger ending. I mean, we obviously know characters are gonna survive the circumstances they're in. It's not that kind of show. But The Bear season two ended on a note where I have no clue where we're headed with the state of the restaurant, with the state of our characters and their both personal relationships and romantic relationships. It was chaos at the end of season two. So I really wanna know how they're gonna continue it. I need it right now. I would watch it tomorrow. Who's gonna guest star on this season? Are we gonna get more Mikey Bear scenes with John Bernthal returning? Lots of questions. Very, very excited because The Bear has consistently delivered for two seasons now, been one of my favorite shows the past two years, easily. I am beyond ready for this new season and I can't wait to binge it all in one sitting like I always do. Next we have Knuckles, which I hate to do this, but I actually don't care about this show. It's the first one that's going down there. That comes out this week, if you guys are watching this video in April of 2024. I just don't care. Um, the Sonic movies are cool. I get to have their audience. I didn't grow up with Sonic, so I don't have the nostalgia for Sonic. They're cute kids movies to me. I don't really care about them that much. Like the third one, I may or may not check out this year. We'll see. But Knuckles, it's like, eh, I don't really care. It just always involved and it connects to the movies. Very cool. There's a fan base for that. I don't really consider myself a fan. No disrespect to Sonic or anything. I just don't really care. Next, we have Creature Commandos. This is the DCU show, which I believe David Harbour's voice one of these characters, Hopper Baby. I think James Gunn is on the record as saying this is gonna come out this year. It's an animated project and the characters are gonna end up being live action portrayed by the voice actors. Cool concept. Um, I still would say eh. I'm curious, maybe, but I would say eh. I put it at the top of eh, though, because it is James Gunn. He's never missed when it comes to the comic book genre, in my mind, so 
I guess I could say maybe borderline curious here. I almost have to separate it because I know I have faith in James Gunn, but until DC as a whole makes a project that I truly love and they consistently do it, it's gonna be really hard for me and I think a lot of general audiences to buy in. So that's why I go there. I play it safe with eh, because I'm not fully bought in yet. Moving on, we've got Percy Jackson season two, which I believe will start filming over the summer, hopefully. I enjoyed season one. I am not an avid fan of the books. I read the first book as a young lad, probably third grade, and I think I read Part of Sea of Monsters, which is what the second season will be based off of. I would say I am curious to see how they pull it off, because Sea of Monsters, if you ask the fandom, is it the consensus worst novel? I can't really speak to that again. I haven't finished reading the books. I read two of them, we'll call it one and a half actually, back in elementary school. So I would say I'm curious, but I wanna go at the top of curious because I do think it can improve a lot of what people criticize the book for, but also there's a movie adaptation, Sea of Monsters, abysmal watch. You could ask anybody, it's a terrible movie. This show has the opportunity to right the wrongs of that. That's why I'd say I'm curious to see how does it compare to the movie? How does it compare to the book? Will the fandom like this or hate it? Will it be good enough to warrant a season three? Lots of questions. Next we have Arcane season two. I watched about half of Arcane season one and then I just got busy with other things and totally forgot to finish it. I would say I was interested, but I never fully like embraced the show and was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever, I love it. I also never played League of Legends, so there's that for you as well. There were some impressive moments. I think the third episode of season one was my favorite, but I never actually finished it. So I gotta go back and do that. I know this second season I think comes out in this fall. I would say I would put it in the A tier, probably pretty high though, because I do want to actually go finish season one. Uh, but until I do that and see how season one ends, I won't be able to say if I'm genuinely excited for this new season or not. Because I was having a bit of waning interest as we got into episodes four and five. The way the show was structured is three three episode arcs. So there was nine episodes. I got through the first three episodes and then I was like halfway through the second and I was starting to lose interest a bit. So I just never finished it. But I would say, eh. I'll probably watch season one before season two, who knows. Next we've got Ironheart, another one of those Disney Plus shows that seems to be stuck in like purgatory. <laughs> I don't know where it is right now. I thought this was gonna come out like two years ago to be honest with you. I would say I'm curious right behind Agatha. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm gonna put it in an eh, like right here. Why hasn't the show come out? Riri Williams is introduced in Wakanda Forever which came out in November of 2022. I thought we were gonna get Ironheart last year. It's not even come out this year seemingly now. What is going on? I thought Rhea Williams was a scene stealer in Wakanda Forever. She was a delightful character, fun, charismatic. Why isn't the show dropped? Alden Ehrenreich's in here. I think Sacha Baron Cohen is in here. What are we doing? Why, why is this show not out yet? Who's to say? Maybe it's not that good. Maybe, I think Anthony Ramos is in it too. It's a stacked cast. What are we talking about here? Why has this not seen the light of day? I don't know. It's very concerning to me. That is a red flag, that's why it's an eh. And last on this list is You Season 5, the final season of the Netflix show with Penn Badgley as Joe Goldberg. How has it gone on this long? I don't know. I really dug seasons one and two. Three was solid as well, but four was by far my least favorite. I think this concept's probably gone on long enough and I don't know how they're gonna even stick the landing. I think Joe Goldberg has to die, that's pretty obvious, but how are they gonna wrap it up? I have no clue at this point. I'll be there though. I think it comes out later this year. They don't have an official release date. I would say I'm curious to see how they wrap this thing up. I'll put it right here in uh, near the top of I'm curious, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know. Did I switch mortars around? I don't know. We'll go with this. Let's put Peacemaker right here. Let's just play charades here. We'll do that. I'm more curious for Peacemaker than you season five. But that does it for this tier list ranking of upcoming shows based on my excitement. Let me know in the comments down below what your most anticipated upcoming TV show is that is slated for release in the next year or two. Again, with TV shows, so many of the times we don't know the release date or know much about them until like the month or two prior, which is so much different than the way we talk about movies. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to that notification bell. And if you wanna watch movies and TV shows with me, you can do so on my Patreon right now for $5 a month. Your support goes a very long way over there. You'll gain access to lots of exclusive commentary tracks and be entered into a giveaway. There's only about 30 spots left, so make sure you can get yours today. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.